Hey guys, welcome back to my sewing room. So today's video is going to be a DIY prom dress video, which is a little bit different than my usual videos, but I decided to go ahead and record the process. I'm going to be using this beautiful blue mermaid sequence and a matching milliskin fabric. I hope I said that right. And all of the fabrics are provided by Fabric Wholesale Direct. So to get started, you're going to need your stretch blocks for your bodice, your skirt, and your sleeves. And if you guys want a tutorial on that, leave a couple hearts down in the comment section and give this video a like. This is our design. So it's just a v-neck with a mesh panel in the middle and a skirt that has a center back gore as well as side seam gores. So what I'm doing is I'm just tracing out uh, my bodice block. And I know where my princess seam is because I marked it there. So I'm just making a mark there at where my princess seam is at my shoulder and then I'm coming up two inches from the bottom uh, at my waistline and I'm going to draw a diagonal line connecting my princess seam to the that little line that I drew there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and continue drawing out the rest of my shoulder, my armhole and my side seam. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add my seam allowances around the whole pattern piece. I'm also going to mark out my bust line, my under bust line, and the waistline is already um, marked out because that's where it stops. And then I'm also going to put a little plus sign there where my uh, apex is. And now I'm gonna grab a fresh piece of tracing paper and I'm going to trace out our mesh piece here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a line for my center front and then I'm going to match the lines that we already have for the slant of the neckline of the bodice piece and that's going to be our little mesh piece. Also gonna add a couple of notches just to help us line everything up when we're actually constructing this. And then I'm going to go around and add my seam allowances, of course. Also guys, uh, make sure to watch this video to the end. That is the best way that you can support me uh, in my channel right now is watching this video to the end because that helps YouTube recommend my videos uh, more frequently. Okay, so I've got all of my pieces drafted. I've got my bodice block, my front and back, which I forgot to adjust the back neckline, which I will do later. And then I also have my little mesh uh, piece right there with notches on both my mesh piece and my bodice piece. And then I have my sleeve pattern um, drafted as well. So let's go ahead and get everything cut out and I will be right back. Okay, so I have everything cut out. I have my little mesh piece cut out of power mesh. I have my bodice pieces cut out of the sequence and the milliskin and my sleeve cut out of just the sequence. Here is my front piece and I'm gonna go ahead and sew the front to the back and this is the point where I realized I forgot to, kid, uh, I forgot to adjust the back piece, uh, the neckline, so I went ahead and just adjusted that. So then I'm going to put them together and sew them. I'm gonna put the right sides together and I'm gonna sew the side seams and I'm going to sew the shoulder seams as well. And now I'm gonna go ahead and assemble my sleeves. I'm gonna just put them right sides together and sew down the underarm seam and then I'm gonna set the sleeves in. You could uh, do the flat method where you don't sew the side seams of the bodice first and then put the sleeves in that way. I think that would probably be a little bit more neat but I did it this way this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I am trimming down all of my threads as well because I use a light blue thread and not a darker thread. So I wanna make sure all my threads are gone. 
Here is the bodice piece. Obviously, because it's a stretch and it's a v-neck, it needs a little bit of support there to sit where it needs to sit. So I cut a little bit of organza, and I'm going to use that to strengthen my neckline. I'm pinning it at the shoulder seam, and then I'm taking it all the way down to the middle of my center front, and then I'm just pinning all the way around. And then I'm going to take that to my machine and sew within my seam allowance down that to connect there on both sides. We're going to do the same thing on both sides. And this is what it looks like when it has a little bit more structure from the organza. Okay, front and back. That's what it looks like. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, add in my mesh piece. You could do a little rolled hem, but I decided not to. And I also decided to cut this a little bit uh, smaller to add a little bit more tension there at that middle part so it's not so open. Okay, so here I am. I'm just showing you given that you could do a rolled hem. I decided not to. Um, now I'm going to put the mesh piece right sides together with the sequins starting at where I put my pin up. And I'm going to pin that down. And then I'm going to sew just this side first before I go ahead and sew it to the other side as well. So I'm going to sew them together with a one centimeter seam allowance. If you guys uh, follow me, you know that everything I do is with a one centimeter seam allowance. It just makes my life easier because that is the width of my presser foot. And then I'm going to trim all of my threads down once again. And now I'm going to attach it to the other side. So I'm just taking that little point there and then I'm pivoting everything over. And then I am matching the right sides together again and I'm pinning it, making sure that the end of it ends where um, my other pin is on the other side. Then I'm going to go ahead and smooth it out, making sure that I'm not sewing onto like multiple layers here. I want to make sure that it's nice and flat so that I'm going to go ahead and take this back to my machine and sew it with a one centimeter seam allowance. So this is what it looks like once the mesh piece is put in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put insert my lining. Now I assembled the lining the same way that I assembled the uh, bodice piece. So it's the same way, just shoulder seams and side seams. Now here I'm matching up my shoulder seams and I'm putting a pin there. And then I'm going to uh, put it right sides together all the way down. Once I hit that mesh piece, I'm going to uh, kind of go onto the inside of the bodice and I'm going to continue pinning the the lining right sides together to the seam allowance of the bodice if that makes sense
And then I'm going to take that to my sewing machine and sew all around the whole neckline with a one centimeter seam allowance. I leave a little bit open there at uh, the center back so I can insert my zipper. So this is what it looks like when it's all sewn. It's really nice and neat. Um, if you use a matching thread, you wouldn't be able to see any thread at all. So I am gonna go ahead and start assembling my skirt. Now the skirt's super easy. It's just the front piece and the back piece and I'm sewing the side seams, uh, right sides together with a one centimeter seam allowance. And then I'm gonna sew all the way down to where the flare is. And then once I hit the flare, I'm going to back stitch. And then I'm gonna go ahead and insert our go day there. This is what it looks like once the side seams are sewn, the godets aren't inserted. I wanted to make sure that I had didn't have to take it in anymore at the side seams before I insert, inserted the godets, and I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and insert them now. Now, the best way to insert the godet for me is to go ahead and put that triangular part right there at the center um, of where the seam line is, and then match the sides of it, uh, right sides together, obviously, making sure that the edges are even. That's the best way that I... Um, know how to sew a, know how to sew a go day in but let me tell you it was a little bit well a lot more irritating to sew it here on the spandex fabric than it is sewing it on my regular satins or taffetas or whatever um so keep that in mind when you're sewing now i am going to go ahead and understitch the whole bodice so understitching pretty much is i'm taking the seam allowance uh, that joined the bodice and the lining and i'm pushing that towards the lining and then i'm sewing that down onto the lining so that my lining doesn't flip out um, to the outside when it's being worn. This is what it looks like once it's all sewn and understitched and everything. And then I put it back on the dress form and I turned under the seam allowance for the armhole there because I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch down the seam allowance of the armhole to cover that arm, to cover the sleeve seam. Okay, so here I have my bodice top pinned to my skirt. Uh, right sides together obviously and I'm going to sew that waistline seam with a one centimeter seam allowance Here it is all sewn together. Um, I just wanted to show you guys what it's looking like now You guys this sequence is so I, I, I don't know I'm not used to sewing with sequins fabric, so I'm not sure if I did it wrong, but it's a little bit harder um, to get that neckline clean, but I, I you know in the end I kind of figured it out, but y'all Help me. <laughs> this is what it looks like once the center back uh, godet is inserted. You guys, I love this. And I've decided to go with more of a fishtail type skirt instead of a more rounded skirt because, I mean, why not? So this is what it looks like. And I also um, glued on a couple of rhinestones there because uh, I thought it was pretty. I wish I had some blue rhinestones, but the regular color ones will do. 
now it's time to sew in our zipper uh, I'm just showing you guys this part here don't worry about that right now because we will be um, turning that over and slip stitching that down to the um, to cover up the seam allowance of the waistline seam so I'm not worried about that right now but what I am going to do is sew my center back seam up a little bit I stopped a little bit uh, too short of I got a little bit short of a zipper this time so I'm going to go ahead and put it back right sides together and I'm going to sew up to where my pin is so that I can have the correct uh, length for where my zipper needs to be inserted. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and insert my zipper. I need to trim my sequins straight because I don't want my zipper to look a little bit wonky. So I'm going to take my fabric scissors and trim that sequins straight. And I'm going to do that on both sides of the center back seam. Now that we have that done, I am going to go ahead and insert the zipper. And I'm gonna use an invisible zipper for this, guys. After the zipper is installed, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the lining. So I'm just putting the lining right sides together to the face and I'm just gonna finish off that seam there. And then I'm also going to turn the lining um, right sides together uh, to the zipper tape and I'm gonna sew that down too so the zipper tape is clean and then I'm going to finish off uh, the waistline seam and then we're all done and this is what it looks like when it's done you guys this spandex and sequence really kicked my butt because this is the first time with me working really with spand uh, with spandex and stretch fabrics but I think it turned out good let me know what you guys think below in the comments thank you guys so much for watching my video and if you watched to the end thank you guys so much for supporting me I really appreciate you guys don't forget to check out any of my other videos. You can click on one of these videos here on my end screen and I'll see you guys in my next one.